Hello, and welcome again from the SEMA show in Las Vegas. I'm Dale Jewett with Chrysler Digital Media. We're here in the Mopar booth, where the big annual aftermarket industry show is going on. We have big news. Actually, Mopar has some very big news in about four hours, and we're hoping that you'll come back then and watch it at mopar.com slash SEMA. But let's take a couple minutes. I found a very interesting gentleman hanging around the booth today. Steve Magnante is a noted car collector, and uh, you probably know him more as a, a, a commentator during the Barrett-Jackson auction broadcast. Steve? Well, indeed, Dale. Great to be here. And uh, yeah, I've got a lot of big news happening at 440 today. We certainly you want to come back and check it out. It's uh, really, really big news. It's awesome stuff. And you know, high performance, uh, very big part of the Chrysler and Dodge legacy in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and just as strong today. Big news at 440 today. Right. Now, Steve, you've had a chance to wander around the booth a little bit this morning. Have you seen anything that's really caught your eye? Well, absolutely. I mean, every year, Dodge does its best to do show cars, bring them out here. I see the Scat Package 1, 2, and 3, the Charger, the Challenger, and the Dart, all of these cars looking fantastic in their oh-so-sexy red and piano black, as they call it. That's the paint that they put on them. And uh, beautifully done cars. They're here today, and I'm just drooling all over these puppies. They're beautiful. All right. And as you can probably see, back on the stage behind us, we even have some more cars that are still under drapes because we're not ready to tell you all the information just yet. But the good news is today's already been a big day for Mopar. Uh, we started the morning off by winning a small award. And we've had a chance to chat with the CEO of Mopar, Pietro Gorlier, who can tell us a little bit about what we won. So we are at SEMA 2013, and Wrangler has won again for the fourth year uh, the award as the hottest uh, 4x4 SUV. Just amazing, the Wrangler keep on winning. And uh, it's just the uh, demonstration of the power of the vehicle in terms of uh, being a great canvas for accessorization and customization. This is why, together with Jeep and Mopar, uh, we put a lot of focus on developing new parts, new accessories, new Jeep performance parts to give the opportunity to every customer to customize his own Wrangler and making it unique. All right. That's great news and a great way to start off our day here at the SEMA show. Now, Steve, this is certainly not your first SEMA show, is it? No, I've been here for years and years, you know, back, uh, oh, between 1998 and 05, I worked for Hot Rod Magazine out in L.A., and we'd come out to the SEMA show every year to see what's new, and of course, you know, line up the next year's stories from the manufacturers, and many of those stories came out of you here at Dodge, the Dakota RT, and of course, all the Mopar performance pieces and parts that came out, first to bolt onto our project cars back there at Hot Rod, and tell the readers all about it. Yeah. And, you know, the, the show, the booth has only been open for about three hours, and it's been an incredible constant stream of people through here already. So it's, it's obvious that Mopar is obviously a, where news gets happening every year, and uh, people naturally wander by here. Um, Speaking of people wandering by, th there seems to be something going on over here. Can well, Go over and find out what's happening for me, <laughs> would you, for, for just a quick second? I think we have our answer, Dale. We have an answer. All right. Well, if we can get Ed to come back over here. Hey, Ed. So, Steve, this, this, this fine young lady, what's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie is attracting a lot of attack attention here on the floor. But you're handing something out, Stephanie. What is that? We have this scat pack tattoo. Okay. Steve, you want to take one of those? Yeah, these are neat. I love them. I'm not sure if this has anything to do with what we're going to talk about later. Not sure. We'll have to find out at 440. All right. Well... But obviously, it's, it's very popular right at the moment. How many have you handed out, Stephanie? I'd say hundreds so far. Hundreds of them so far. All right, fantastic. Well, then, Steve, how did you become a Mopar guy? Well, you know, i got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm 49, so basically I'm on the very tail of the baby boom train. 1964 is when I was born, right? But um, I think growing up in the 70s, it was kind of a dark time for factory high performance. Let's face it, catalytic converters, 55 miles per hour, speedometers, and you know, fuel allotments. It was kind of a dark time. So into the early 80s, I'm like 20 years old, say 1984, and I'm realizing that uh, factory muscle cars are kind of coming back. You know, there's certain real drive platform cars from Brand X manufacturers, and also the turbocharged front wheel drive cars coming out of Dodge. Pretty exciting stuff. I never, ever, ever thought that we'd see a return to rear wheel drive cars or Hemi power plants from Dodge. Brand new cars we can buy today with Hemis. I never thought I'd see that ever. And and so it was just kind of like, like dying and going to heaven and seeing all these scenes come back. So it's just great that the old and the new are coming together and charging forward into the future right now. What the Dodge thing comes down to 
for the most part, in the max wedges in the 60s, the street hemis, it did seem like Dodge gave the enthusiast more performance than did a lot of the, the competing cars. Frankly, a lot of them used a station wagon engine with three two-barrel carburetors to become a muscle car, but Chrysler gave you aluminum fenders, functional ram air, cold air scoops, batteries in a trunk, the max wedge cars, and it just seemed like Chrysler went all the way with their engineering. And so I just kind of, you know, I saw through the BS on the other cars, and these Mopars are really, really fast cars. So in 86, I had a Hemi Charger, a 68 automatic car, and, um, you know, since then, I pretty much never looked back, and Mopars are pretty much what I'm into all the way. All right, Steve, I, I got to tell you, my blood, my blood's up by like 500 octane after that just little talk with you. I appreciate that very much. Hey, you know what? We've, we've asked people to, to take questions, send us questions while we're talking, so if you'll hang on a second. Let's see if, let's see if we've got a question or two. Okay. Um, any details on what engine powers the Dart? Well, the Dart, as we know at this point in time, there's a 1.4 turbo. But but I have to stop you, all right? Sure. Because we need people to come back at 440 yeah, to right. find out all these wonderful details. That's right, that's right. All right? Okay. So right here live on this webcast at 440 on the West Coast, 740 p.m. on the East Coast, at SEMA, excuse me, at Mopar.com slash SEMA is where you'll be able to watch the entire press conference live. You'll see Steve, you'll see the heads of the Mopar and Dodge brands. You might even see Stephanie again, too. All right? But, but indeed, yeah, the 2.0, two, the 2.4, two oh, and the 1.4, that's all we can say at this point in time right. about what's under the hood of the new Dart. Sorry. Sorry to tease you so badly, <laughs> but it's, it's all in good fun. All right. Thanks a lot for watching us at this time. We'll be back again at 4.40 p.m. at Mopar.com slash SEMA for the live webcast of the Mopar and Dodge press conference here at the SEMA show in Las Vegas. For Chrysler Digital Media, I'm Dale Jewett.